Yeah, so uh, I was really going to do more homework on this and uh, talking about the the tithe issue because it's hard to determine out of the scripture if the tithe is something that is directly connected to the commandment, thou shalt not steal, and then it says, where have you robbed me in tithes and offerings? Now, I went through the struggle of thinking about this whole thing myself, and you know, should I pay, and at times I pay, and then at times I said, wait a minute, now I, I, I don't trust this church, I don't trust the guy teaching. And what I finally came to at the point where I'm at now is that if, if there isn't someone who is a true minister of God, not somebody teaching false things, who's fake, who's a tear, who's just not doing what he should be doing, there's, that's, that right there is, seems to me to be a, an absolution from the necessity to tithe. Now, could be wrong, of course, as always. Um, and a lot of people would say that, you know, you should just find some church, even if you don't, you know, fully believe in the guy or you think his teaching is wrong, uh, and, and pay your tithes. But to me, I don't see how it makes sense to pay your money to somebody who is teaching wrong things. Now, and then there's the other component of this. Now, I never, as you know, on my channel, I don't spend time talking about, you know, I don't make requests for money in my movies. Um, if people want to give me donations, the way I've done it is how I've survived this nine years living on the street doing this is when I'm really broke and there's no other source, I send a request email out to my friends if anybody can spare a fiver. And if, you know, any one of the something like 150 people that, during that entire time, okay, total out of the 7,700 subscribers that I have currently as of April 17th, 2022, uh, I got about 150 people total that have ever donated to my channel. But that has been enough to sustain me even after YouTube demonetized my channel. And then um, when I was like, I was like out of money for the insurance for the car, so I wouldn't be able to drive. And who knows, that could happen anytime, very easily. Oh, wait, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, um, and so, um, and, and I've just been able to survive uh, like that, you know. Just and and oh yeah, when the, so when I was out of cash, then um, God sent that angel, and that whole amazing adventure, which um, that that was completely awesome, but. As far as, um, like, you know, asking people to, to send in a, a regular tithe, I'm not a regular preacher. I don't, you know, I'm not somebody who, you know, people go to church every Sunday and the, the, the minister has to prepare a whole sermon and everything each Sunday, and that's his, like, full-time job, and everybody who goes to that church pays their, you know, pays some tithes, and that's how he affords the rent for the church and everything else. We, here in America, I got a church on every street corner you look around I mean there's, there's no question about it you can make a living doing this to me I don't like that um, I never like that I never I just somehow to me that seems that seems too strapped in and there's o only so many interesting things that you can teach out of the scripture now I know that there's there's really an infinite amount of things but I mean interesting to me things that I would be interested in talking about. That's why I don't, you know, I don't cover like the ground basics. You know, I have in some videos, you know, I've gone through that series, you know, the my my take on, on the scripture and, you know, what it takes to be saved and, and that whole thing. You know, I've done serious parts on that. But after you've done that once, I don't see, to me, you know, repeating it over and over again, that's just not a life to me. That's not, that's not keeping with being interested, excited, and creative, and excellent about what you're doing, as, as, as much as you can be. You know, in my case, I don't know how excellent I am, because I'm not very popular. I don't have something like 
you know people that are that are popular uh, on YouTube it's not because you know the reason I don't have that many subscribers and not that many views is not just because I'm shadow banned I do think I am shadow banned but if I was somebody that had you know like a comedy show like Jimmy Dore or a uh, disclosure show like James Rink uh, you would uh, you know then I would have you know a lot more people following and plus as I think the true Christian knows and, and some of those people who follow me the real truth of God and what's happening here is not going to be as interesting to a lot of people. Because first of all, the people that like to listen to paranormal stuff generally don't like to listen to anything Christian and vice versa. And, uh, and so the, what I've done with my channel is kind of like a hybrid thing. It's kind of sitting in between a little bit. And a lot of people that subscribe and they say, oh, the monsters, then they see something from uh, Christian preaching, oh, pfft, unsubscribe. And then people who see the, the Christian thing, oh, yeah, cool, and I love Christians. And then they see the paranormal thing, oh, wait, aliens, oh, no, it's part of Satan's deception, unsubscribe, you know. Or I talk about, you know, stuff like uh, the spirit and, and the women, uh, elect women, anyway, of the scripture being transgender, then they really unsubscribe because the simpleton and the scorner can't, can't withstand that teaching at all. But to me, the person who's saved goes by his knowledge of the scripture and then comparing that to what the person says. And if even if he doesn't quite agree, you know, you can at least, you know, the scripture talks about those who can render a reason. And if you can render a reason out of the scripture, then at least that person is not being some sort of unscriptural, you know, maniac as you see so many times. And even these teachers that are very well, you know, versed and they they know all the scriptures by heart and they can really deliver in these in these videos and they make these big complicated charts and everything. They can just be totally off, and I watch them for a little while, and sometimes I can be interested. Like at first, when I started watching these people, like wow, there's a lot of people. They, you know, like these this one uh, Korean guy, and then this one, uh, you know, this these this one guy does these really complicated charts, and then there's this other guy, and and but what I found, if you if you listen to them long enough, all of a sudden you begin to realize, first of all, that you just you, you somehow get burned out on listening to them. You're kind of like. Uh, your mind starts to wander, and then you're uh, okay. And but more importantly, you listen to them long enough, and you hear the problem with their scriptural reasoning. It's like, I mean, problems that are so big and so missing the revealed truth. So as for me personally, to lack interest in even listening to them because. It's like, like there's this one guy, like the AOC Network, okay, and he doesn't, you know, I don't, again, I don't like to bash anybody, I don't like to, you know, speak against Christians who are working hard and, you know, making videos and trying to make people aware and doing the best they can, and everybody's flawed, everybody's got their, their problems, and everybody can be, you know, anybody can be wrong, but he's an example of someone who makes very entertaining videos, you know, and, you know, I, in general, I, I like him, but, again, as I listen to him, to me, I lose interest because I think he's wrong. I think he's. I think overall he's wrong, and he's going to be one of those people, thus being wrong, to find out the hard way how wrong he was when it comes to judgment time. That's just my feeling. Now, I could be wrong, and I again, you know, if, if you're listening, Mr. AOC Network dude, um, you know, feel free to take me apart. You know, reverse speech me. A lot of weird, fascinating. And scary stuff comes out <laughs> so you can debunk me I see it's easy to debunk me but I just have to say what what my piece is you know what I what I think the truth is and um, you know it could I could be totally wrong I mean I've been, I've been you know wrong about plenty of stuff before so it's not like you know if, if unless you're perfect then oh that must mean you're a tear you know if you're you know wrong about one thing oh that's it you're a tear you know and, and, and judge somebody that way but so I'm just saying what I what I find to be the case and how can I how can I give my money and my tithe to someone when I hardly have any of my time I mean I'm just scrimping by it as I've been for like the last 32 years but saying saying that um, the case is that um, there is no there is nobody that I I find to be true you know if there was even one 
one pastor that I listened to long enough and I really thought that that guy was was on target, then I might, you know, like see about going to his church or, or maybe donating to his channel or something like that. But like even somebody like, uh, I think it was like Lawson or Dawson or something like that, you know, great preacher and, and uh, a lot of people I don't think, you know, I, I don't necessarily think that they're not going to make it just because their scripture doesn't agree with what's in my head. And I think that they're that they're good people. They're people that are trying, just like the AOC guy. I think he's, a, you know, generally a, a, a decent man. You know, I don't want to say good because, you know, we know no man is good. But as decent, uh, you know, that you would give to a person to say, you know, I think that, that, that guy is a decent guy. But at the same time, um, there are failures which cannot be seen. You can't see them on video. You can't see them in their sermons. Um, and behind the scenes, which the failures you can see might be revealing, which is why I I kind of lose faith in them. You know, if there was one preacher, th there's um, there's some deceased preachers I can recommend, and uh, like for instance, um, uh, hold on, I think of his name. Uh, he's a deceased. Uh, he was a mainly a, a demonologist. Um, I'll think of his name in a second, but he was um, he uh, Derek Prince. Okay. Derek Prince, and uh, this guy was, you know, f from from his teachings and everything, he seemed like the real deal to me. Like I would like this guy if I met him. I, and, and if he was a local preacher that I could go to go to church and and you know listen to his teachings and stuff, that's and you know then then I would. And if I attended his church on a regular basis, you know, because because I liked him, because I felt he was the real deal, um, I would certainly feel obligated to to pay something you know I don't know if I could pay 10% every time or you know who knows what the story is but you know I would at, at that point I would seriously be into considering the tithe because I do think that we we you know we as Christians need to support the Christian work and the fact of the matter is with me not being a regular preacher um, but the fact of the matter is that is how I have survived by people spontaneously without me asking by the way the whole thing with with people giving to my channel for the most part has been the people who say they're gonna give me a donation never do and the people who do give me a donation never say before they do they just do that's just how that's just how it's been I mean I don't know I don't know why but again the the fact remains and it is true under this day that I have survived up until now by the fact that people without asking have given me money and you know who knows what I would have done otherwise but the overall and then with that angel telling me that I was uh, that she got the message to protect a priest and I never call myself a priest you know but that's this was a real angel guys and along with three other angels that I met and it was it was the real story man and uh, and she and, and she said she got the message to to protect a priest, and she did by giving me that money that that allowed me to not just stay at that place, but to um, affect some repairs to my cars and pay for my pay for my vehicles, so I could at least continue my luxury vehicle lifestyle, if not indoor living lifestyle. So um, that right there might kind of say you know because it kind of looks like it looked before to me and I've mentioned this before that God had assigned people to to support me because he was supporting my work the work of I guess talking about the beasts the paranormal stuff the non-humans kind of like my main my main thing besides preaching the gospel so there was a purpose to that and it, and, and then especially after the angel said that to me that she was told to protect a priest then it really starts to look like God is supporting this work but again we never know who knows who will be surprised at the judgment what he did and what he didn't do but um, what I can tell you is that um, I, my opinion to you that I would give is that I am I am someone who this is my job, as little as I am as I am paid. Uh, I've, I haven't gone hungry one time, not one single time. 
haven't always eaten what I've liked. It's, it's not filet mignon and lobster every night, I can tell you. <laughs> filet mignon, baby. But uh, I think this is this is the, the real story. And this, if I have scriptural reasoning by which to consider, because the when it talks about the basically religion being false in Isaiah 66, basically you know gives like a, a rundown. You know, he who uh, does this religious thing is a, is as though he drank swine's blood. You know, he who does this or that. Uh, beagle, I'm sorry, I had to go honk at this motherfucker because everybody, uh, you know, every time I go driving now, um, I just get people just totally, it's unbelievable. I, it literally, literally is unbelievable, so I won't waste your time telling you about it. So I'm going to start collecting the, uh, the stuff on dash camera and putting it into a compilation because if you just say it once or show one guy pulling out in front of you, it's, it, there's, no, there's no argument. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's just... Uh, Okay, so anyway, back to the back to the to the uh, tie thing. I'm, I'm digressing. Uh, so, if if it's the case that people that are um, in this time doing these religious ceremonies, like these Catholic ceremonies and stuff, I've seen them do, you know, and. And I've been in these churches where they do like these ceremonies, you know, and they do the, the communion and all this stuff. And I don't want to put down any of that stuff. But at the same time, the reality might be that what we've got here is a, uh, hold on a second. Okay. I thought I saw that guy in the SUV. The, the, this, this guy in a black SUV pulled out it, totally too far into my lane. That's why I honked at him. And he was this um, big black guy with a mustache. He's giving his dirty look. And, and I thought this guy here was him, like, like coming up. Because I saw him changing lanes. I thought he was going to come. It's happy to be all, all the fucking time. I, I'm actually, my, my record shows I'm a good driver. And I, I, I don't think I'm that great of a driver because uh, I'll forget sometimes and back into BMWs. Look, it just so happens there's a BMW right there. But um, in any case, uh, yeah, so that's why I interrupted. But um, in any case, so if, if, it, if it is the case that, um, that these, um, these religious things, as much as I'm not putting down religious activities uh, and, and you know, things that people would do in the church, I don't, I don't want to be against that, but at the same time, it might be that all the people now that are of these these formal institutions of the church could all be bullshit. I don't know. Maybe, you know, I don't want to make light of it, but it's kind of the feeling I'm getting. And I've, I've talked to you about this, you know. So then it could be the people like this... <laughs> this one British guy, I forget what he called himself, uh, uh, pastor uh, something profane dude, whatever, you know, and he, he was, you know, just generally, you know, like probably just some, you know, ordinary guy, you know, an ordinary blue collar guy. But, you know, it could be that people like that and people like me who aren't very special, just ordinary, you know, run of the mill, yeah, got, got my Christian Bible here and I'm going to give my freaking... Uh, sermon here so y'all just shut your trap and I'll try the best I can but um, that may be the only real people that are out there I don't know because I'm listening to these religious people and they're sounding more and more like it's straight up bullshit yeah by the way right now I'm working on uh, the thing with you know the the xenomorph and alien well uh there's something at the james rink channel uh super soldier talk on rumble uh this guy named uh, uh something Payne and uh, jimmy Payne and uh this guy let's see my memory is just sucks too much weed. actually my memory sucked before i ever smoked weed um this guy jimmy Payne and uh now uh, i'll do more talking about how you know I totally don't blame anybody for not believing it. But this guy has this heavy southern draw, and I've been listening to this guy for like five hours because I listened to his two-hour two, two, two hour and 40-minute um, interview with James Rink twice. 
and uh, this guy just has this heavy southern draw which it just kind of sticks in your mind you know because you got to make some money and the, the way he talks it just kind of it just kind of rolls around in your mind and you start finding yourself thinking that as you're walking around during the day just that that deep show them to draw and you can't believe this freaking guy can drive a spaceship in 1979 but it turns out he did because i think he did so uh i've been having that uh, that <laughs> that accident rolling around in my head and uh yeah so uh it's uh, pretty amazing turns out the the alien the xenomorph is real but anyway i'll i'll, uh, I'll include a few clips from that in my in my comments about it but if you want to check that out it's uh, uh jimmy payne uh, xenomorphs. Uh, I think it was he. It was actually February, so way back in February, that uh, uh, 22 that he published this. So it's been out for a while. But I just discovered. I haven't been keeping up on the uh, on the Super Soldier Talk channel. But uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, pretty wild stuff. But uh, just to uh, wrap up on the uh, on the thing with the uh, the tithe is that. As, as far as myself goes, you know, I think God will move people to help me, but also, um, you know, I don't, I generally don't ask people for money. The only, the only time I do that is if I'm out. And so I do it on an as needed basis. So that's kind of the basis I've been doing and that's kind of the basis I like because if I set up some sort of thing where, you know, I ask people to, to pay their tithes and, and, you know, regular tithes and everything, then that straps me in to a, you know, a requirement to come out with content. And I, I to me, I don't like that because it lacks spontaneity. You know, a lot of people, they, you know, in order to pay their rent or their mortgage or whatever, they, 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 that's what they want to do. Apparently, I don't, and that's why I'm living, willing to, to live on the street. And you can't do this forever. My old man warned me. He says, you know, you can, you can do that in your youth. That's one thing. But when you're old, ooh, that's a whole whole different story. And it will be. But I've seen, you know, there's plenty of old people. No one cares enough to take them in. Our system doesn't take them in. They're old. They've been there for a long time. I've seen them. And I've seen them even like before when they had cars and they lost their car and they're walking and pulling a little cart behind them. And that's all they got from now on for many, many years. Ooh, it's a scary and painful fate, but you know, that's that, that, when I look at what all is happening here in the world, that's what you got. That's what this is. It's, it's a lot of that, so it's, it's no surprise if that's what happens. And, uh, you know, you know, it's like that thing in The Simpsons, you know, well, we're special, the, you know, the terrible fate won't happen to us, but it could. It certainly could, you know, who knows? Who knows what will happen? But, um... Uh, so I'm just gonna keep it like that because um, I don't believe in like a, you know, a thing where I'm obligating people to pay. You know, you know, like like if people don't pay their subscription, like a lot of people subscribe on on uh, PayPal and and uh, and, and uh, Patreon. I don't, I don't uh, email people a, a warning. You know, say hey, you know, I didn't pay your thing, whatever. You know, I, you know, I'm not gonna do that because uh, I don't, I don't like that. You know, like again, that's that to me is like being a coin slot. Um, you know, put in your coin, you know, insert coin for preaching, you know, or whatever videos. Um, to me, it's got to it's got to be about doing something with with true interest, passion, excellence. You're doing it because you you like to do it. You're not doing it because you have to. Because when you have to, then it's like you're 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 grinding. You know, you're at a you're at a mill where you're pushing a cart. You know. Um, and that's not, that takes away from doing what you want, doing what interests you, you know, and that takes away from the quality because the quality is because you're doing something that you're passionate about. And for me anyway, maybe not for others, but for me, that robs it of its spontaneity, of its juice. I like, uh, driving this piece of shit in this, uh, ritzy town here. In uh, Bel Air, Mont what is it? Anyway, rich people town. And uh, this car, the, the headlights are all faded out of it. And uh, that's one reason why I get disrespected any, every time I drive anywhere. And uh, it's 
it's kind of funny how people in a in a nice neighborhood will like totally freak out. Oh my god, it's some lower income scumbag. But it's always been like that for me in, in my hometown. I'm just an Okie who somehow made it to LA. <laughs> So I'm going for a uh, nostalgia walk down here, 3rd Street in Santa Monica. <laughs> and uh, i just been walking down here forever, dude. For well over 30 years, like almost probably 35 years I've been walking down the street. Just, you know, I come down here for a, a walk at the beach. And uh, this leads into the 3rd Street promenade, which used to be a lot more cool. but. Uh, it is what it is, and yeah, so you know, I was thinking that uh, since I already talked about the xenomorph, the alien, from the movie Alien, as actually being real, I bought all the movies in the series. Uh, I figure since I uh, already bought it up, I'll go ahead and uh, talk about it a little bit. So, as I said, I wouldn't blame anybody for not believing this. I didn't believe it kind of at first. When I was listening to him, I'm like, this guy could just be like watching the movie and then, you know, he's having, you know, a delusion that it's all real and then he changed the name and all that. But if you listen carefully to the whole thing, you will realize that, in fact, this is the real thing because um, it's, it's either the real thing or a very carefully and expensive, uh, expensively done fake, you know, a, a deception. Somebody, you know, somebody, he, he would have to be scripted, he would have to, you know, this would have to be very well practiced because, you know, um, in the interview, which you can see, once again, Jimmy Payne, Xenomorph on Rumble at the Super Soldier Talk channel with James Rink, um, what you'll notice about the testimony is that, he, that uh, James Rink uh, cross-examines him. He talks to, with him and everything, and he tells the whole story. And it's almost like the movie, but a lot, a lot of differences. So, for one thing, the, he, he, he called, when, when he's telling the story, he says, I'm not going to tell their real names, so I'm just going to use the movie names. And, um, and he, like, again, you know, he talks in this, like, really heavy southern drawl, you know. And it kind of it kind of belies the fact, you know, like, wow, this, this dude could fly a, a spaceship, but he's also a colonial marine. So the colonial marines were actually true. And uh, he says that um, a lot in the, in the second movie, Aliens, was actually true. So here's a few differences. Um, so basically, he said that he was a Vietnam vet and that uh, he was looking for a job and then because he had already been working in the space program. And uh, so he so he, he got a job being basically a, a space trucker flying the Nostromo and um, and so he said that um, it, it was you know huge about like like the size of the space shuttle um, with all the stuff attached to it that was the size of it and then I don't know because because that thing detached from the uh, from the cargo thing and then he said that the derelict spaceship and by the way according to him uh, you know Jimmy Payne it's not his real name but um, he said he says that um, the derelict spaceship, the alien, and the facehugger are all exactly like um, what he saw. And so he tells the story that, that uh, basically what he had gotten was an order to go pick up uh, the, the mother computer, gave him an order. They came out of hypersleep uh, unexpectedly because he was hauling the freight. And so um, now, now the difference is the, the, the Nostromo didn't blow up. What happened was... And, but the xenomorph, he says, it, it grew as fast as what they show in the movie, and um, and it was seven feet tall. But uh, instead of um, instead of uh, Ripley blasting it out into space, what happened was it turns out Ripley was was uh, she was the one who sold the the the, um, the script, uh, the, the 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 entire story. She gave it and forty thousand dollars to Senator Byrd who I already knew from Kathy O'Brien and some other sources that this guy was like really bad news. Like one of these super evil people. That's how you get high, high ranking, uh, you know, um, in these things. If you're like this rapist, you know, you just totally, you know, 
um, have sex with these uh, presidential models that they send you if you read Kathy O'Brien's book, Trance, as in, as in hypnosis, trance, trance dash formation of America. Uh, just get ready for a super gross read. I think it's still available on Amazon, but it's 30 bucks. And it's a book, like, you know, pretty pretty thin book, but I mean, he, it's it's mind-blowing. Anyway, so basically what, what, um, what happened was, um, in the, in the and and uh, and by the way, Jonesy the cat wasn't a cat; it was a gremlin. Okay, and uh, you you know you got to go listen to it yourself if you're interested in this. If you're interested in the alien, because I was always fascinated by this, and this is truly a fascinating revelation for me, because um, you know I just thought it was like you know a scary. I thought like maybe um, H.R. Uh, Geiger, who by the way you know we find out he he isn't the designer of the alien. What happened was this description and sketches were given to him and then he came out with a you know, more refined look, I guess, for it. So it turns out he is, that's another fascinating revelation about this, is that H.R. Geiger isn't actually the designer of the alien. It actually really exists and they, and they just gave him the sketches and stuff from what they saw. Who knows, maybe they even have some pictures. Turns out um, what happened was um, Ripley panicked when um, it did, the, the, um, the xenomorph, um, actually, in, in, uh, I think it killed some crew members, but it cocooned others, or I forget what it was. Maybe it was just just cocooning. Uh, kind of hard to actually get the, the full whole, whole story. Uh, and uh, but but he, you know he tells it all, and he you know describes it in detail what happened, and how he what what really happened was um, Ripley panicked, and she did sell, set the Stromo to self destruct, and she took Jonesy, the Gremlin, and. Uh, and took off and 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 took off out of the sh out of the ship, but uh, but uh, the Captain Dallas who didn't who did not die in the ventilator shaft like you see in the movie. Uh, hold on a sec. Captain Dallas, uh, that's also what kind of the name he goes by uh, when he's you know telling the story to people because he he he's the real life Captain Dallas. And he was he 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 was piloting the ship. So um, so as I said, uh, the character the the real person. But who, who's she, her name was not Ripley, but that's that's what she was obviously called in the movie. Um, she set the the uh, Nostromo for a self destruct, setting two reactors to blow. But he came in and over did an override and and stopped the destruction. So it was just him on the ship with the alien and the other people that were cocooned. And uh, Ripley took off in the in the uh, in the escape hatch, escape uh, uh, pod, whatever you know, mini mini ship, and. Uh, and he calls her a traitor, by the way, and says that he would never go out into space with her again. She was a, uh, a psychopath with a uh, split personality disorder. So, um, and then, uh, and so Jonesy was a gremlin. I said about, about a foot high. And uh, he said that, 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 that the movie Gremlins was also partially based on, on, this, uh, on this gremlin. But he says he didn't know about it. He didn't, he didn't know, um, you know, he didn't have any part of the movie making. He said that what happened was uh, that Ripley sold the script to, uh, to uh, you know, or whatever, figured out a way to, to make money. He, and he said that they, they spent about $10 million making it, and the first week they made $100 million, so you can see why they did it. And, uh, and everybody thinks it's just a movie that, you know, somebody made, and H.R. Geiger was given the role of creating the, uh, the alien. But in fact, the alien xenomorph is a real creature, and he said it all happened exact, just like, just about like what the movie showed, and uh, except that um, again, the uh, and and the uh, the alien itself, the xenomorph, the one that was on the ship, um, he he put some hypodermic needles on a pole, and he drugged it up to where it was like. Um, really um, like incapacitated and he doesn't tell he doesn't say what happens there but he says the next thing you, you, you hear about it is that he is that he brought the uh, it got the, the alien got brought to a facility in Antarctica where they studied it and he said that they they figured out all about it and how to fight it and everything I'm sorry about this breeze here and uh, hopefully it's not getting a lot of uh, a lot of wind stuff so so he, uh, they, they brought it to Antarctica and they, and they had him, uh, Captain Dallas, uh, AKA some other real name, this was his real name, but 
uh, they had him in quarantine because they didn't know what does you know he had had contact with the alien you know, they, they, they confirmed they didn't have one of the eggs in him and then uh, but but uh, they didn't know what diseases the the xenomorph might have had or that ship you know the uh, the uh, derelict ship might have had so they kept him in quarantine but then uh, but then he got he uh, he had a, a rough time there and you know because they were keeping him you know basically locked up and he got some explosives and he blew his way out and he was and he, and he said he's been out for 40 years and you know he hasn't you know had a problem of, of any kind but who knows maybe he unleashed you know some kind of some kind of disease that we don't know about into the general public but that's just pure speculation I have no idea about that but um, you know, it's 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 quite fascinating. And again, you know, if you're thinking to yourself, listening, I'll I'll, sh I'll include a few clips here. Maybe you can just listen to it. But you got to go, you got to go check out the whole thing for yourself because it's it is freaking wild. I got a on to it. He he was dead. He had been there a pretty long time, and um, you know he. He had a, I thought he had a gunshot wound at first. Um, so I thought I was, had walked, had, I thought they had to get the, that the astronaut had been murdered. That was my first thought. So I, you know, I get, went around and came up on the other side of them. Usually if you shoot somebody, you have an a entry wound. And then you have an exit wound. Well, I knew that he had, you know, two or three ribs that were broken. So, you know, I went on the other side and tried to find the, the entry wound. Couldn't find the entry wound. And um, so I got suspicious, you know. I, I didn't understand it. And uh, it, again, um you know, of course, here, here's the, the, the two scenarios. I, I don't think the guy can be delusional because, you know, he, he cross-examined him and saw that he he was pretty rational. And even though it's, it's kind of hard to believe that this guy can fly a spaceship and all that, but he did. I think he did. And and it's, it's just that, you know, they, I mean, and by the way, this guy is probably smarter and more capable than I'll ever be. Even with, you know, because I mean, I, and I don't mean to make fun of that southern draw he has, you know, talking like this, because, you know, it, we, you know, that's kind of a stereotype to us Californians who have our California accent, which is basically no accent. So guys, I don't know whether it's good news or bad news, but it is, it is something to consider now. If, if you're like me, if, if, if you take a look at this, watch the whole thing, it's two hours and 40 minutes, all right, like I said. But if you do, and you check it out, and you come to the conclusion that I did, that this, this guy is telling the truth. I mean, he, he was Captain Dallas. He was the pilot of the Nostromo, and uh, that whole thing was real. And he goes down, and, and the whole thing where, where he goes with three people and goes to the derelict ship and everything, and then, and then the alien uh, jumps up and, and attaches itself to the guy's helmet, and then it plants a seat in him, and then it bursts out the table. All that, he said, happened exactly like the movie shows. It's just like that. So, actually, man, that is, uh, that is some scary stuff. And it does kind of make sense to me, you know, because when I was looking at that alien for years and years, I just thought, wow, that's just the coolest idea with that long, elongated skull and everything. And now to finally learn that that actually wasn't an artist's creation, it was a, a real creature, and somebody gave the notes to H.R. Geiger because he was already an artist who did kind of similar stuff, you know, similar looking weird ass stuff and uh, dark stuff. And, uh, and so he made the drawings for it and got the credit for the design. But uh, the reality is that that was a creature, who knows, that maybe the Lord designed, who knows? And probably so that people could have, uh, you know, space adventures of fighting something a really really deadly being and uh, have that whole adventure who knows you know 
Or who knows, maybe space is still... Oh, and he also says that the Predator is real and that he killed two of them, okay? So check it out. It's it's, it's on the Super Soldier Talk channel on Rumble because uh, YouTube doesn't allow his stuff to play anymore uh, because he has too much stuff about, you know, World War II and, and you know, elements in there, N-A-Z-I uh, uh, elements, and so they, they don't allow any of that stuff and they, they, they just kept taking his movies down. So uh, he, he moved it over to Rumble, which I don't blame him for. And uh, but uh, um, you know, and and scroll down to I think it's like February of of, uh, of this year, 2022. So uh, check it out and uh, see what you think. But um, I don't know whether he was a target. I think he was. But um, if you listen to a lot of these super soldiers on the Super Soldier Talk channel, what's wild is that even these super soldiers, and I knew one personally, um, they get heavily targeted um, by their own government whom they serve, which is, that's just completely wild why that would be. Um, it's like, it's like, and, but see, uh, what I found out was all these super soldiers, there's, they, they are all have, uh, fractured personalities. So there's one that's awake and one that's asleep. And then, um, you know, the, the, the active one tends to be like really uh, cruel and heartless. And they, you know, and they, because and they, that's the one they want to go off on these satanic missions of, of uh, these, you know, just, just the utmost violent, bloody, um, off world fighting uh, uh, scenarios. And uh, so it's, um, it's, quite, uh, it's quite a scene. And I've been doing a lot of thinking too about uh, the, uh, the whole reason why there's a, there's a breakaway civilization. There's the spacefaring and the non spacefaring, and you are in one or the other. And um, so, they, so they either let you in the program of letting you know everything that's going on, and chances are the people who they let in are, are either hybrids themselves, so, they, so they're known to be people that have um, part reptilian, part arachnid, part uh, mantid, part uh, feline, whatever. And, uh, and these, are, these are the children of abductees that are part of the whole human beast hybrid program and they go and they you know and these are the people that they that they can truck because they know that these people um, already have unusual abilities psychic kinesis abilities because all like regular humans don't generally have that kind of thing and uh, but if they do their their eyes which are everywhere will spot them and they'll either kill them or bring them into the program which means fracturing their personality and um, and I think the re one of the reasons that, that for that whole separation, so that we don't know what our what our taxes are going towards, the whole purpose of that is, be is so that they can do all of this horrendous evil that they do, and 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 not have to answer to the public for it, so they don't have to explain where their tax money is going to all these secret off-world programs, and so forth. And uh, so um, that's. Well, probably why they do that. I don't know. I mean, it, it's and and the the hallmark of all these off-world programs and uh, secret space, you know, um, SSP, uh, you know, Dark Fleet, all of these um, programs. The hallmark is that all the the crap that they do is highly evil and satanic. They're all involved with. Um, uh, you know, you, you probably can't even, you can't even be like the most basic initiate without going through the training programs of, of uh, you know, they, they sit you in a room with uh, three other people and uh, you're, you're forced to kill each other, fight to the death. And, um, and then, but they, but apparently people don't die the same way as they do from our current understanding. Uh, they, they, once, once you get killed, they can take your soul out and put it in another clone body, and you're ready to rock again. And they, and they keep doing all this stuff. And I would just, uh, I would just say to, uh, to fellow Christians who are skeptical, you know, say, oh man, all oh, this is deception, this is a distraction, you know, away from Jesus and everything. Um, here's, here's what I, as a man of God, say to you, after looking at all this, um, even though there is a lot to be skeptical, I would say. Um, don't close your mind to this because uh, I think that it, when you take a look at this, the whole thing, it is, um, 
it is, to, to me, it is much more likely that, in fact, the stories that these super soldiers tell and the things that you see going on uh, that are, you know, revealed at places like the Super Soldier Talk channel, uh, Project Camelot, uh, and other sources that they've pretty, pretty much weeded out from YouTube because they're, they're making YouTube to where it's only like little, little you know, fluffy light stuff, not, not anything heavy, not anything deep, dark truth. You know, that, that's the way they're going. But um, that there's so many sources that are re revealing this stuff that, and, and, and talking about their off-world experiences, so many people that just really can't be brainwashed or lying. I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's impossible, but there's just too many to think that that's the truth of what's going on. I, I, I just, you know, that, that, it, that it's all just a deception. It's all just people, you know, making a story. I think, I think that uh, space is filled with, um, you know, countless alien beings. The government does have time travel. Um, they do go backwards and forwards in time, and uh, and all this you know crazy stuff, because you just, you just hear it from too many quarters, too many people, uh, for it to be all just a grand deception. And that really, you know, what I would say to uh, to people who uh, think that that all that is a distraction. Like if you believe that, then you can't also believe in Jesus Christ. And they're, and they're thinking that because you believe in in aliens or extraterrestrials. That means you can't believe in Jesus. That means you are distracted away from the faith. And, and, and the great falling away, a lot of people think that the great falling away is going to be caused by people, you know, uh, oh, the aliens come and say that, uh, yeah, we created you, or, you know, this is the true evolution of your planet, and their, and their technology is so advanced, everybody goes, whoa, they must be telling the truth. And that's what causes the great falling away. But I, the, but I have to say, Personally, I don't think so because you know the Lord never says anywhere in His Word that belief in off-world beings of any kind or or in any way would, in actuality, um, mean that 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 the other can't be true. So you know the the what I'm saying is those two realities, you know, space and all of its vast beings and, and technology and all this, you know, wild stuff that you hear going on in secret space, that that is mutually ex exclusive from the fact that heaven and hell is, is, is real and coming. And a lot of these people don't know about it. Uh, they think that um, if the scripture says that it has given man once to die and after this the judgment, that can't mean that people aren't dying off-world in these space combat scenarios and taken out and put into a clone body and then they go and do it again and they get cycled around many times and they've been all sorts of alien beings throughout the universe. They've been reptilians, they've been felines, they've been ancient humans, Anunnaki, and, and, and all this, like, like what Hendrix, uh, the, 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 uh, this one interview that I've, I've included clips from, one of the most awesome interviews, mind-blowing interviews, if it's true, I think it is, but it, it, you know, I keep my mind open. But uh, what I'm saying is that um, that that all that stuff doesn't mean that salvation is true, it isn't true, and that that stuff um, uh, can be going on simultaneously, and the people in those programs don't realize what they, you know, don't don't realize what we know because God has given it to us to, to know, but their, li their lives have a whole different track, a whole different purpose than ours, that we, we are separated from them. And, and frankly, as the scripture says, we are to them fools for wasting our life with, with uh, you know, this, uh, you know, false religious belief and, you know, oh, we're going to go to heaven afterwards, that, that whole hope. Is, is a waste of time to think. They, they, they just think that that's idiotic. And frankly, they don't like us that they, because their spirit, remember, even so, your, your, your spirit is aligned with one of two things, the Lord or the devil, in basic terms. They don't think about it that way, but it's like a funnel system. You didn't, maybe you didn't start out that way, but eventually you, uh, you, fall, you fall into one of those two categories. So now, you know, if it's not true, what's what's the big deal? You know, it happens ten times a day. People get fooled by something, or they they believe something's real, and it's not. But if it is true, then it means that my theory that I talked about in my eight-part series on alien abduction 
that in fact, out in space would be an even more hostile environment than what Earth is, is true. I mean, there are aliens out there that are super, super nasty. And, and the, the thing that would really be, uh, I wouldn't say icing on the cake, because I don't know whether to be glad or whether to be scared, but I think that alien from the thing where it takes you over with a single cell invading your body and it rips out of you in this alien pissed off dog going <laughs> could be and likely is real because if you think about it out in space in with ancient sentient technology using aliens with with ancient wars fighting against each other they wouldn't hold back from the ultimate weapon and I think that is like the ultimate weapon. A bioweapon is the ultimate weapon. And the bioweapon that could take you over with a, with a single cell that like, remember in, in the movie The Thing, when that thing um, comes out of the, uh, that dog goes and then it sprays down the other dog with this liquid, you know, and they're all running like, oh, and, and, and uh, because that, all they, all it needs is just one cell of its, of its, uh, of its alien beast, you know, thing, to 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 crawl down into into one of the pores of your skin, or get in your mouth, or get in your eye, or something, and then it could start replicating inside your body and take you over like that. So that um, that really is the ultimate, and then and then it comes ripping out of you and, and then duplicates you perfectly, even you know getting your memories and everything, so you behave and exactly the way the the person behaved or, or whatever the animal behaved so uh that would be that truly would be the ultimate weapon damn somebody lost their phone thing so yeah um if if that is the case and if you know and, and if this story by this guy jimmy payne aka captain dallas is true then uh it is it is truly a scary universe wow it's a monday here and maybe it's because it's the day after easter or something everybody's uh everybody, maybe they some kind of holidays usually there's not that many people down here all right i haven't go down here in a while so who knows maybe uh it's just gotten that much more crowded in la because people are figuring out that the weather here is almost worth it. I, if I was, but if I was from somewhere else and I was used to it, I would stay there. This, uh, the situation here with uh, everything going down with these mandates and everything, it is freaking bad news. It's nasty. It is nasty. So what that means, if it is true, is that that's all the more reason to be bloody careful and be a friend of the Lord. Because I think stuff like that may actually get unleashed on the earth after the, uh, after the rapture. And so when all the people are raptured up and, and a lot of people have figured it out, like, wait a minute, all these people disappeared. Uh, and then uh, and then stuff like that, you know, might start to be released because all that stuff like space might be the abyss, you know, because I get the feeling uh, from looking at H.R. Geiger's work that he's he's having visions of, of the demonic realm, of the, the realm, the dimension where where hell is kept. And if that's the case, then um, and those things are real, it could be that when it talks about the abyss, the bottomless pit, that could be what it's talking about. I don't know. I mean, that, that could be what, and so all those creatures that he shows, you know, these demonic, you know, half man, half machine, half beast, you know, you know, very evil looking, like kind of like this weird, dark mechanical stuff, clearly satanic, clearly demonic. Uh, that's that's actually the craziness that you see in the demonic realm.